Hey guys, it's Nikki from the Monogram Shop, and I debated about doing this video because I wanted to title it something that I saw on Facebook. I saw a funny post the other day, and gal was having trouble with her sewing machine. It was making a lot of thread nests and stuff, and another gal answered her question. She said, what's wrong with my sewing machine? And the other woman said, sewing machines are fickle bitches. And I don't know why, but it hit my funny bone, because I, I don't necessarily think they're very fickle. But I do think there's rules involved in getting them threaded to make sure they work correctly. So my husband's agreed to film. My daughter's not here. Remember, she's away at college. So we're going to show you some things to make sure you get good results and you don't ever get a thread nest. So we're going to try to stay focused here on the machine and here in this basket so you can see some tools that you'll need. And I'm going to start at the top of the list and I'm going to go down from there. Uh, let's see. First thing we want to talk about, spool caps. And I'm going to pick them up and show them to you. You were most likely given these spool caps with your baby lock machine. And you may or may not have been given a gray one like this. I'm not really sure which one you were given. These spool caps are designed for different types of spools of thread. And let me show you what I mean. These are many different brands of threads that I have in my sewing room. So we've got some Aerofill or Aerofill, like we call it where I'm at. We've got some basic Mettler sewing thread. We've got some Madeira rayon embroidery thread some King Tut quilting thread, a mini Madeira spool, a larger Mettler spool, some sulky decorative thread, and this is an exquisite embroidery thread, and then this is a decorative Madeira thread. Spool caps are designed to hold a spool in place, and your spool cap should always match the top of the spool of thread. This is really, really key and it's important. And they come so many different sizes because thread comes in different sizes. So I'm going to show you how to match up a few of these. The mini spool cap that came with most baby lock machines fits most small spools of thread. So you'll notice. It can be a small, a tad bigger, but it really needs to be pretty close in size. Going up a size, we've got this medium size. This fits the Madeira thread really nice. It also fits this Madeira thread. See how close it is? You really need to match that spool cap. And then we've got these larger ones. This one to me is too large for this. I really think this large one works with some threads that I can get in Europe and Japan. There are brands, not here where I live, it tends to match this one. Okay? Now, sometimes you've got this interesting type of thread. And if my husband agrees, maybe he can kind of show my thread rack. This is a brand I use a lot, Floriani and Exquisite. I love it. It's great thread. And I like this type of thread because it fits on my multi-needle machine. The issue is this thread's meant to stand up. So we do have thread stands that come with the Destiny. I don't normally keep mine on the machine because I like the door closed. It's, it's just a matter of personal preference. But this little cap is designed for this type of thread because remember that it's meant to thread standing up. So when we lay it down horizontally, we need to use this little spool cap. So I'm going to thread a few of them and let you see. And I probably picked up a thread that doesn't have an end. Okay, it does have an end. All right, so we're going to talk about threading this machine. And I'll use this spool and also show some others. So the first thing I want you guys to note is the door on your machine. And I actually have the embroidery foot on, so I'm actually going to take it off and put the sewing foot on. Because if I don't, I'm actually on the sewing screen because I have more room here to film. So what I have next to me is the digital walking foot, so that's what I'm going to put on because I'm not going to dig through my drawer. This is here in my own personal sewing room. We're not at the studio. So we have to make do. Plug that in. Okay, so now to let me choose. So the first thing I want you to note on this machine is this door right here at number four. This is the biggest problem we see with this type of machine. People tend to try to thread this machine with the door closed. This is the foot up, the door opens, foot down, the door closes. You need to always have the foot up. Always this door needs to be opened. It is possible to push the thread past and you'll end up with thread nest and a lot of tension in here and you'll have to take it in for service. So please leave the door up when threading. So that's the first thing. The next thing you're going to do is slide your spool on. And I'm going to use this little gray one because it's perfect for this. Now here's the first thing. People like to really lock this in and the thread can't pull. Give yourself a little bit of room. Okay? And then holding it like it's dental floss. You're gonna, and I want to make sure that you can see, you're going to come up. And as soon as you get to here, you can let this one go if you want. I tend to hold it. You're going to go down and back up. You're going to make sure that it catches in here. This is called a take-up lever. It has to be in the take-up lever always. 
go all the way down. And this is this is the tip I can give you. When you want to use, this is actually the thread catch right at the needle. Sometimes people have a hard time getting enough tension. When you get to here, you can drop the foot and it'll put tension on the thread to make it easier to slip it past. Then you're just going to go up to this slit into number seven and put the cut right there. Then if you'll touch the needle threading button, we have on-demand threading and it's threaded. Now, to unthread this machine, the same thing is true. The foot needs to be up. And I know if you've had a machine for any length of time, for 30, 40 years, if you've been sewing as long as I have, you just want to grab it and pull it out. There are little tension discs in here that are computerized that let you know that the machine is threaded properly. So this is the only way you should unthread any computerized sewing machine. Cut from here, pull down at the needle, and remove the whole link. The reason is, every thread should pass through the tension disc to the left, always. Don't yank back because you can cause damage up here and you will need to take it in for service. So that's this particular spool cap. Let's put something else on the machine. Um, let's see, I like to use this thread a lot. This is one of my favorite sewing threads. I like it, it's a Madeira thread. I might have pulled one out of my rack, but it's not easy to open. Okay, so this is one that's not really a candidate for this little cap. And let me, let me get this so you can see. This is not a candidate for this cap. It really does require this cap. So same thing. I'm going to make sure the door is up. Now I get asked a lot, does it matter if this threads this way or if it threads this way? Okay, I have found it tends to catch more coming over. It does tend to do better falling under. You'll notice the threads coming out from the bottom. That's just a personal preference. Again, don't have this so tight that the thread can't pull. Give yourself a little eighth of an inch. Again, two fingers. Come up and over, down, back up, making sure it's in the take-up level. You'll hear it make a little tink down to here. And if you don't have enough tension, you'll notice I have my finger wrapped. If you don't have enough tension, drop the foot, put it behind the needle take-up level to the cut, and then we have our automatic threader. Works every time. Now, on that note, some of you have mentioned that your needle threader doesn't work. And you're frustrated because it's broken. They rarely, rarely break. Let me tell you how they break. This is what happens. Those of you who have been sewing any length of time, you touch the hand well. And I do it too. We tend to scoot it down to get the needle to check for needle placement. Here's what happens. If you've touched this hand well, the needle's not at the highest point. And if you touched it, when you go to use the needle threader, it has a little tiny filament inside the needle threader that grabs through the eye. If you accidentally used the hand wheel, the needle won't be at the highest position. If you did it, don't worry about it. Unthread the needle, put the needle down, and needle up one more time. That will compute, it's a computer. It will actually raise it to the utmost position. Then you're just going to go ahead and hit needle threader again. That is how you keep your needle threader perfect. It won't break. I've never had a needle threader worked on ever in 20 years. That's how you take care of them, okay? Next thing. Let me, I might have to look at my list. We wrote it down. Let's see, we've got spool caps. Okay, well, you get the idea about the general spool caps. I don't really have one for the large one, but the medium is for this. Do use the right spool cap. Get them out and use them, okay? Let's see what was the next thing. Pre-wound bobbins. I get asked all the time about pre-wound bobbins. Do you use them? Do you like them? Yes, I do, but I only like this particular brown. And I'm going to show you guys what it's called. Because you'd be surprised, it's not actually a Janome or a Baby Lock bobbin. This bobbin, and it, it comes from my dealer, their Baby Lock dealer, but this is what they sell. It's a Janome bobbin. It's a double A, and they're white. This is the bobbins I buy all the time, and they work. I really like them. You can have other bobbins. Sometimes I buy pre-wounds like this, and I know some of you wind your own bobbins. That's fine as long as you can find good weight bobbin thread. Here where I live, it's just easier to buy a pre-wound bobbin. Having said that, if you wind your own bobbins, I want to teach you how to wind a nice bobbin. Because I have seen some crazy bobbins from y'all. So let me show you something. Um, this is actually your, your spindle to wind a bobbin. It needs a cap. Please put a cap on it and get a clean, empty bobbin. Now, I get asked, should I wind thread? If I buy pre-wound bobbins, can I wind thread on them again? 
What happens is these are wound by a special hopping machine and the plastic gets very, very warm while it's wound and that's what makes it so full and perfect if you'll look. They're really full. When the thread comes off and you tend to rewind them, they, they tend to expand and they don't actually fit in the bobbin case very well. So I don't advise it. You can maybe give it to an arts and crafts center, maybe a senior center if you want to repurpose them, but I don't advise rewinding them. Please use the bobbins that you can buy from your baby lock dealer. They look like this. Okay? So I'm going to scoot out of the way so my husband can get this on film. I'm going to put the bobbin on and I'm going to show you guys a trick because this is the best way to get a really clean bobbin. Okay? So I'm going to come over here clink it in and come back this way. Now let me show you my trick. I like to wrap three times and then I make a little slip knot. Can you guys kind of see that? I just took my fingers and I wrapped it once and I'm going to slip it down over where I've already wrapped. Okay? And then there's a little slit right there you can cut. Okay? Close the button and hit start. And I like to run it about medium speed. You can run it a little faster if you want. You'll notice that you don't need to actually hold your finger like we used to have to, but you'll see a really clean bobbin. The reason for the really clean bobbin is this. I tied that knot to give it tension. If you'll give a little bit of tension to that bobbin, it'll keep it from slipping and you'll get a really smooth looking bobbin. The, the key to finishing well is starting well. And If you'll start with a really good bobbin and if you'll thread this machine correctly, you will not have trouble. I, pr I promise you that it is that good of a machine. You just have to actually do the steps. So. Again, are they fickle bitches? I guess they kind of are because you have to do all this. But if you will do this, it will work. So I'm going to stop the machine. And please don't use this catch to stop. It will stop on its own once it's full. And I'm going to take this off so you can see my bobbin. This is what a good bobbin looks like. If you didn't wind a bobbin like this, go back and wind another one. Okay? It needs to look this clean. This is what they need to look like. They need to have perfect tension. Okay? All right. Next up to bat, we did winding bobbin, cleaning the bobbin case. Do I have to clean my bobbin case? Yes, you do. Let's talk about it. And I'm actually going to take off the digital dual feed so you guys can see this. Normally you would not have to go to this much trouble, but we're filming. So let me remove this really quickly. Now, you will get a message on your screen when you take off the stitch plate cover. And I know that Baby Lock advises you to shut off the machine. Um, obviously, I don't shut off my machine to clean out my bobbin case, so I'm probably breaking the rules, but good thing I only work for me, so it doesn't matter. So you're just going to push this direction and take this off, okay? Just remove it out of the way. You'll see it says there's no needle plate cover. That's fine. It's not a big deal. So here's my bobbin and here's my bobbin case, and I want to make special note, and I'm going to use these scissors to kind of make a point of it. There is an arrow and a dot on the bobbin case, okay? Do you see those? Those are very important. Please take note of those because when you put this bobbin case back in, they're going to match up, okay? So we're going to take out the bobbin and the bobbin case. Now, mine's very clean, and I want to tell you guys why, because I keep it very clean. But, and I, I kind of want to point this out to you. This is what Baby Lock gives you, and it, it's really cute. I'm going to give it to, like, a friend's Barbie, their daughter who has a Barbie, to sweep the house. Because, I don't know, it's, I guess it's, like, it's little. I don't like it. I like this thing. This came from the auto place. Like they do auto detailing. You can just get it. What was the auto parts place? Riley's or AutoZone. This kind of gets all the fuzz out. You'll notice there's not a lot of fuzz in mine. I keep it very clean because that is very important. The other key I want to tell you about is this. And you can buy this in a lot of different places. It's called TriFlow. It's a silicone lubricant. Now, our machines do come self oiling from the factory, but one drop of this is fine. And I'm going to show you one drop. Ladies, don't go buck wild. One drop. That was two. Sorry. One drop. And then I want you, and I just want you to go right here. Okay? And just kind of rub around. Just a little bit. If you get a little excess, get your Q-tip. Kind of clean it out. Just a little dot right there. Now, that will keep the machine oiled and running smoothly. It'll keep it from sounding clanky. But now here's the key. If you're one of those that touch your hand wheel, if you touch the hand wheel, this bobbin case will not be in the correct position. That's why I told you to always have it in the needle up position. I'm going to put the bobbin case back in. And some of you I've watched really fight. You don't need to fight. Keep that arrow and just go straight back. If you'll just go straight back, you'll see. Did you see how it dropped in? It just drops in. It's that simple. Okay? Then you're going to slide your cover back on. And it just kind of slips in. I love that we don't have to unscrew this. I'm going to put my bobbin back in. Okay, it's pretty simple. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you too about this bobbin. 
your bobbin should be you know fairly full you can use a little low bobbin if you want I like to drop it in and hold it so I come around and I hold it comes in through there over and you cut it okay and you put your cover on and then you re-thread your machine now what about thread? Do I have to match my top and bottom thread? When you're sewing, you do, and when you embroider, you should also be pretty mindful of your weights of your thread. Uh, many people have written blogs about this. You don't need me to tell you about thread weights, but I can promise you this. If you will thread this machine the way that I showed you, and if you will keep this bobbin case clean, and if you will keep your hand off the hand wheel, and if you'll oil it occasionally, and if you'll use the proper spool cap, she won't be such a fickle bitch. I'm serious. She won't. She just. You need to do. You need to do a few of these things. Maintenance is a big deal, but you probably don't have to visit your dealer as often as you think if you'll do these things. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope the use in the term of fickle bitch wasn't offensive. If it was, I'm really sorry, but it hit my funny bone. Um, tomorrow I'm going to make a video about the rehooping the stipple quilt. Hopefully tomorrow night, and I'm headed to Sacramento on Friday and Saturday. So I hope to see some of you guys there. Have a great night. Goodbye.